If I could get in a time machine, there is absolutely, there is only one destination for me, and that would be July 3rd, 1952, noon in New York at Pier 86. Uh, I would be aboard that maiden voyage. New York City to La Havre, France, and Southampton, England. For those who sailed on her, it will be a day long remembered. It was very exciting. There were airplanes flying, there were whistles blowing, there were flags all over, there were fire boats out, all spraying, you know, all the whistles and everything. It was very, very exciting. Margaret Truman was on board, and her friend, Drucy Snyder. You just felt the excitement the minute you put your foot on her. There was live music playing as the ship backed away, and there was the excitement when you started to feel the shudder of the ship under your feet. They didn't know, of course, how fast she was going to be. Would she take the Blue Ribbon? Would she beat the Queen Mary? Would it be in Yankee hands? We seemed to know from the start that she was out to break the uh, record, and so there was an air of excitement as we neared Bishop's Rock off England's coast, our pride in the new First Lady of the Seas mounted with each passing hour. Somehow we knew she would fulfill the role for which she was destined. We waited by the radio and my mom kept saying, no, no, not yet. I'll let you know when it's close. From the chalk room to the engine room, a glorious effort was being made to prove America's merchant marine supremacy. It was about one or two in the morning, Margaret Truman, Drucy Snyder, and about six newspaper reporters all dancing the conga and I was the lead, full of champagne. So I said, let's all go up to the, the bridge. Uh, Commodore Manning was at the wheel, and he looked around as if in shock. He said, Miss Truman, we're about to break the record. Would you like to put your finger on the wheel? She very sweetly said, let Laura do it. So I put my finger on the wheel, and he said, now get out of here. <laughs> I, had my, I had my finger in, on the wheel for one second. That's right. We literally screamed with delight when the news flashed. SS United States smashes the Queen Mary's record. Three days, 10 hours, 40 minutes. Average speed over 35 knots. So fast that the speed of the water sandblasted the paint from her bow. About 4,000 people have grandstand seats for the big entrance. In the last 100 years, it has been broken 29 times by the Americans, by the British, the Germans, the Italians, the French, and now by America again. The news was flashed around the world. Headlines in Dublin, London, Rome, Stockholm, Copenhagen, Brussels, Geneva. For the first time in almost a hundred years, an American ship flying the American flag had regained the transatlantic speed record. And they made it in just a little over three and a half days. I can't imagine what happened in the home offices of the Canard Line. That's a beautiful ship. And I understand the Canard Line gave it a 21 torpedo salute when it came in today. The captain of the Queen Mary had sent a telegram to the captain of the United States saying, well, this proves that your girls really are faster than ours. Heading westward now, bound for New York. This time, everybody suspected the United States was going to try to capture the record westbound, too. It smashed the record, this time by as much as 10 hours. My grandfather did these detailed calculations that she broke the record by a greater percentage than ever had been done, and that just thrilled him to no end. The race was over. We were back in New York, and we'd brought home the bacon. On her return to New York City, nearly everyone seemed to turn out to see the sleek new ship glide into the harbor with a fireboat and huge harbor craft escort. were awarded the Hales Trophy, symbolic of the Blue Ribbon of the Atlantic, and her crew paraded up Broadway for the traditional hero's homecoming. And that was a great symbol of national pride for the country who held the Blue Ribbon. That's at a time when these things actually mattered. The famous jet came along in October 1958, ubiquitous silver tube, and stole it and made it six hours instead of five days. So consequently, uh, she was left with the record, which Happily, she still holds and will never, ever be beaten. 